Hi, I'm Jamie. This is Dead Dodge Garage, and I just traded in the world's most reliable car toward a V6 Challenger for reasons. Mostly because I was bored. Seriously, nothing in here but mind-numbing boredness. Man, I had a lot of junk in that car. Sure. Now, of course, as a diehard Mopar guy, I've been eyeballing modern Challengers since they were released. It's cool. It's like an old Challenger, except totally different in every way. And there was gas left in it the first time I drove it. Apparently, it's been on some test drives since then. Also, I might have allegedly doubled the speed limit with this thing before I bought it. Ooh, look. I bet that one's got a Hemi. I almost left with my Corolla key. That would have been funny. Kind of rude, but very funny. I bought this thing from my friends at Car Stars in Aberdeen. I love these guys. They're always giving me the best deals. Unlike that Corolla, which I bought from a competing dealership. Did a three foot tall person test drive this? I can't see anything. I bet a whole bunch of you are wondering why on earth I would buy a V6 Challenger. Well, several reasons, but here's one. They are not slow. From the day these things launched, I knew I'd own one eventually. I have to say this second generation that started in what, 2013? I don't know. Whenever they freshen the tail lights and the grill and change the whole dash, they are much more attractive. If you know e-bodies, you know this asymmetrical center console is actually modeled off of the original e-body unit. And that's kind of cool. I love the dashboard setup. I like this gauge cluster, the screeny thingy, that's fine. It does all kinds of stuff. I used to own a 2014 Ram. In fact, that's what I was driving when I started the channel. And that truck had kind of all the same stuff. Built-in zero to 60 timer. Because, well, not race car, but something. Apparently it has a best zero to 60 time of 6.6 .6 seconds. We'll have to see if we can beat that. Okay, I'm gonna miss 35 miles a gallon. I already do. So, basically what I've done is ruined my daily driving experience by downgrading to a newer Challenger with a V6 that's not even all that impressive or fast and gets way worse fuel economy. Why did I do this? Oh yeah, like I said, I was bored. Quite some time ago now, I did a video test driving another Challenger from the same lot, actually. I might have allegedly done burnouts in that video. All right, you can have a little tire smoke for a treat. I rest my case. Anyway, way back then, I explained what it is I really like about the 3.6. It's got about 300 horsepower, it gets acceptable fuel economy, and it's whisper quiet. I had this engine in my truck, my 2014 Ram 1500, and man, I really, really liked it. I've gone on record saying that you really don't need more than 300 horsepower to have a good time on the street. And I think I've already proved that in this very video. This car is not slow. Fancy push button thing. It's official, I have too many keys. The eight-speed automatic transmission is definitely another important component in the awesomeness of this setup. I had the same transmission in that truck, and again, it impressed me. I really want to see that dial down there say 30. Might take some work, but I think I could do it. The backup camera was broken, but it fixed itself. That's funny. On the internet, it said to slam the trunk. It worked. If you don't know, these rear-wheel drive Chrysler cars are kind of based on a Mercedes from the 90s. Yeah, kind of dated, and yeah, they're kind of chunky, but still, they're nice driving cars. Now this car has seen some things. Both of the bumper covers have been popped off and were not popped back in correctly, so I gotta fix that, among other things. Also, for some reason, there are a bunch of little tiny dings and scratches down this side. Perfect Jamie car, basically. Oh, the curb rash. I mean, come on, if it was like perfect, I couldn't own it. My personal opinion is that these cars are just a great balance. They look nice, they drive nice, they have decent power, they're not loud and obnoxious, they're very comfortable. Okay, they're not like Mercedes comfortable, but they're pretty good. I mean, the column tilts and telescopes. Fancy stereo? Yeah, very. It has like apps, whatever that means. It has a sport button. And of course you can turn the traction control off. Oh, and unlike in my truck, 
you can fully turn the stereo off. That's neat. In the truck, you can only do this. And it's still on. Really annoying. Okay, I'm not sure about that range calculator because if that average mileage is at all correct, the 16 gallon tank is gonna yield a range of like 400 something miles. I only just noticed that it has paddle shifters. I'll probably never use those, but you know, it's kind of cool. They kind of missed a spot on the windshield. I am completely blind right now. Todd. Be your own detail guy. I've never been much for that. Seriously, I just don't believe that worked. Okay, it's better. I can at least mostly see now. What do you think? I like it. Okay, that's good. This is too fancy. Back in my day, cars had keys. Wow. Now to the avid viewer, this beautiful and absolutely perfect color might look familiar. Huh. Well, it's pretty close anyway. I was hemming and hawing about actually pulling the trigger on that Challenger for weeks, but then yesterday, Tracy, the owner of this car, threatened to buy it himself, so yeah, couldn't have that. I want to just sit back and admire it, but first, I gotta fix some of this dumb stuff. That was way harder than I thought it would be. Wow, it was like that for a long time. Yeah, this car's been bounced off a few things. I'm not one of those perfectionist guys, but I think I'm gonna have to get one of those little touch-up pen things because this is just irritating. Okay, just like the Corolla that I just replaced with this car, someone tap danced on the roof at some point. And just like the Corolla, I didn't notice that until like I'd signed for it, basically. I love this. I love this view. It's awesome. I saw one of these in traffic next to a new Charger the other day with the racetrack taillights. Just the coolest. Oh, there's a button. Wow. The trunk's kind of heavy with that spoiler, which is also awesome, by the way. Okay, there's one thing I really don't like, and it's these big, ridiculous, gray-ish wheels. I'm not a fan. I kind of have a different vision for this. Something like a 17-inch torque thrust? I don't know. What the heck would you put on a Challenger like this? Ooh, brand new brakes. And just like the Corolla before it, brand new rusting rotors. Oh yeah, somebody got into the trunk trying to figure out the whole rear view camera thing. Turns out all you needed to do was slam it as I figured out, but uh, I'm missing some clips here. Usually I come prepared, but I guess I'm out of that size, so that's unfortunate. The camera issue could well be wiring related, something in here, or it's just straight up a bad camera, but as long as it keeps working, I'll keep ignoring it. Oh wow, a battery, an original battery. So it's like almost six years old. That's okay. I've gotten like 12 years out of a factory Chrysler battery. 14 years actually. Although there were two of them because Cummins. And there's a tray for stuff, but there's no spare tire. Of course, the coolest part is probably this. I thought they were made of plastic, but it's actually aluminum. Taking some fine cut cleaner to some of these finer scratches and they are disappearing. That's awesome. So much elbow grease. Nice. Yeah, a little bit left in there. Look at how that shines up. Oh, that's too cool. Great. Now I have to do that to the entire car, and I really need a clay bar. I don't even know what this stuff is. All right, it doesn't totally delete the scratches, but it sure does make them harder to see. Wow, that one's fading away. That one's through the color, so not so much. Same with that guy, I guess. But again, you know, it's harder to notice now. So that's cool. How do you scratch your hood there? Driving through a bush, maybe? I swear this is not gonna become a detailing channel. But this is pretty hashtag satisfying, hashtag transformation Tuesday or whatever. Well, yeah, it's better. If I ever mentioned that I really lack patience for this kind of thing, seriously, that color is the best. So sparkly. Okay, this is definitely gonna take hours, but a lot of those scratches are disappearing. <sighs> now I'm gonna have to give it a real bath. Great. This little clip was popped out and the gap was wrong. Fixed it. Uh, kind of a boo-boo though. And the back bumper slightly whoop de dude up here where it meets the tail panel too. I just love this look. It's so good. Apparently every single thing that's ever been loaded in the trunk was dragged across this rear bumper, so that's great. I know I could get out some more aggressive compound and like a rotary polisher and make those disappear even more, but you know what? I don't care that much. 
I don't know what the deal is here because it doesn't even feel like this mirror is broken. Okay, maybe it's a little broken. Get the epoxy. Oh, this ruined tint definitely has to go. That's very irritating. Nailed it. Yep. I've got to wash it at least once, right? I think so. And the lights turn themselves on again. Hmm. This hood is just the best thing. So cool. <sighs> Water spots. Kind of hard to see. The reason you don't want to do this in the sun, although I got right after drying it and even in the shade. There you go. Horrible water spots. That's the whole reason I wanted to wash it. Yeah, okay, whatever. Did I mention I'm not qualified for any of this? Remind me to buy one of those fancy water blade things. Chickens, stop pooping in the clean driveway. I will turn you into dinner. Man, that's pretty. Also, I found more scratches. Did they use this car as a shelf? I figured out the light thing. It keeps getting confused every time I walk up on it with the key in my pocket. It's too fancy. Uh-huh. Cut to some unknown point in the future when I'm buffing this whole thing because there's like weird residue all down here. Ah, still. Looks pretty dang good. I don't like the big ridiculous wheels, but these tires are Z-rated and they're six months old. Dang it. Man, I've only just realized now that I got one of these late models, I gotta start parking in badly places and taking more shots like this. And I've gotta get a giant decal of my Instagram handle and then I gotta put that like diagonally on the back window so everybody can look me up and like pictures of my car parked badly. Speaking of my Instagram, did you know I have one? This will come as a shock, but it's Dead Dodge Garage. If you want day-to-day -day updates of whatever the heck I'm working on in between videos, my Instagram's a great place to get that. I made a post about this car last night and I got a lot of response to that. Some of it was what I expected. You know, why didn't you buy a Hemi? A lot of it was actually remarkably positive. I'm somewhat surprised by that. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to buff the whole thing. That's all there is to it. It's just like candy. Anyway, that brings me back around to the reason I'm making this video at all. To explain what the heck I'm doing here, why I bought this thing, why I think it's great, and why I think you might wanna consider it too. Well, that, and because I literally don't do anything without picking up a camera anymore. The predictable comment that I got, and that I know I'm gonna see a hundred times in the comments of this video, why not a Hemi? Well, I'll tell you why not a Hemi. First off, I firmly believe that a regular daily driver car doesn't need any more than 300 horsepower. And this V6 delivers that easily, smoothly, quietly, and efficiently. Second, I spent years as a regular mechanic you know how many screwed up Hemis I've had to fix? A lot. <laughs> yeah, it's a little chunky, but it handles pretty nicely anyway. I don't want Hemi problems in my life. I just don't. And that's not to say that the Quad Cam 3.6 V6 is perfect by any means. It's not, it has its own issues, but they're relatively minor, easier to deal with than Hemi problems. Oh look, the natural enemy of the modern Challenger. The modern Mustang. At least one person I've talked to about buying this thing so far said that they've heard the V6 Challenger is terribly inefficient and slow. I think they're thinking of the earlier V6s because the 3.6 is something completely different. The quad cam 3.6 liter Pentastar engine makes right about 300 horsepower. In the Challenger, I think it's like 295 or 294 or something. And the Ram 1500, it's actually rated at 304. Both of those numbers could be off by like two. Now what made me a believer in this 3.6 liter engine was the one found under the hood of my 2014 Ram 1500. That truck was a full size crew cab, four door truck, short bed of course. It was four wheel drive. It had a factory off-road package that meant it was lifted an inch. You know, I mean, it was pretty big for a half ton pickup. And yet that V6 propelled that thing to speeds that were absolutely ridiculous for a four door truck. Sure, the 1,000 foot-pound Cummins is going to do more than this little V6 does. I'm just saying, for its size, it's really impressive. That truck was rated to tow 7,000 pounds, and it did all the time. And the unloaded mileage was in the low 20s, which again, for a pickup truck, kind of insane. And it did all that smoothly and quietly and relatively reliably. 
These engines have two consistent flaws. I've fixed them many, many times. And again, I prefer them to Hemi problems. Those flaws are the cam followers. It takes the place of a rocker arm. It's like a rocker arm, but tiny, and it has a roller bearing in the middle. It follows the cam directly to actuate the valves. Then there's a lash adjuster over here to keep it snug at all times and prevent noise. The little roller bearings in those followers wear out. When they do, the arms start flopping around. The other thing they do is wear out the camshafts. So if that happens to yours, you really want to catch it quickly. I have replaced countless 3.6 rocker arms, mostly in earlier engines than this one, although I'm sure it's still a problem. The other issue I see time and time again, the oil cooler. It's a heat exchanger that cools the oil of the engine with coolant. To do that, both coolant and oil flow through it. It lives here in the valley of the engine under the plastic intake manifold. The factory piece was aluminum and plastic. It is such a common failure. I couldn't count the number of them I've replaced. I've replaced multiple twice, the one in my Ram 1500 and in my friend's Jeep. I actually made a video about this problem that got a lot of views a couple years ago. Again, on that white Challenger I test drove and allegedly did some burnouts in. On that one, I replaced it with a factory type plastic and aluminum unit. Sometime after the fact, I started getting comments saying, why don't you just get the dormant aluminum housing and fix the problem forever? Thankfully, when the same problem happened on this car, that's exactly what they did. This is the updated dormant aluminum part. It should be good to go. I happen to know it was just done and they didn't fully burp the cooling system when they did it, but that's another story. These are issues I can live with. These engines are pretty easy to work on, honestly. It's not a big deal. I can knock one of those rocker arms out in like an hour, maybe an hour 20. To me, one of these cars with the V6 under the hood is kind of the jack of all trades. It'll get decent fuel economy. It will do burnouts. It will move through traffic plenty fast. No, you're not gonna set blazing eighth mile times with this thing, but it's fun. As mentioned, I've worked on and driven plenty of Hemi cars and trucks. And yes, they're more fun when you hit the loud pedal. There's no question of that at all. But I prefer this. I want to be comfortable in my daily driver. I don't want to hear my daily driver. I want a nice stereo, air conditioning, a nice seat to sit in. This is all of those things. A guy just drove by hollering dead Dodge Garage. I have arrived. If you've been watching the channel for a while, then you know I actually 392 Hemi swapped a 71 Challenger. And that was great. It was fun. It was also kind of terrifying. So hopefully all that makes sense. My take on these V6 Challengers, in this second generation anyway, with the Pentastar engine and the very pretty updated styling, it's kind of the Goldilocks zone. It's just right. It's not too slow. It's not too fast. It's not super efficient, but it's not horribly inefficient. It's not a Cadillac or a Rolls Royce, but it's pretty comfy. Is this thing deserving of a dead Dodge garage sticker in the back window? I don't know. It might not be dead enough. I look too dirty to own this. Oh yeah, easy choice. Shiny. And another thing. I was seriously tired of shifting gears in my daily driver. The eight speed automatic is Kind of a godsend in that regard. It even has a fancy mode. When did Camrys become race cars? I don't know. Seriously, this makes it so much easier to eat a burrito. Mm hmm. Richard! I swear I said this wasn't gonna become a detailing channel. I just love the way these things look. It doesn't even really matter that it's kind of sort of styled on a classic one. It's just a good looking car in its own right. I find it important at this juncture to note that I'm not just trying to justify having bought a cheaper, slower Challenger. If I wanted a Hellcat, when I had the money to buy this, I would have bought one of those. But I didn't. I made my choice. And I have no regrets. And the truth is, this 383 car is plenty fun to drive. It's also currently slightly broken, but I don't want to talk about that right now. This crappy van's also a pretty red color, but for some reason I'm less excited. Where did it go? Blech. It is way too nice today for this garbage. I see you've got a performance exhaust. Yeah, I just noticed it too. What are you even doing? Well, it's hours later. I think I gotta like tie a bow on this one or something. 
I did notice this goofy dent. Need to pop that out. Not a big deal. This again? I will set you on fire. In summary, I know Hemi make big vroom noise go fast, but Penastar make eh and goes zoom. So good enough for me. I'm sure countless people will complain in the comments anyway, tell me I'm a moron, totally wrong, the V6 is worthless, scrap metal, and I should like just jump off a bridge or whatever. But I really think this is a great package and maybe you'll agree, but I don't really care. I'm happy and that's all that matters. Well, that in sport mode. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's pretty good. Also, I need to stop stomping that pedal or that number is never gonna hit 20 again. Modern Camaros, the true natural enemy of the Challenger. Oh dear, I accidentally parked near one. Yeah, those look pretty good too, but I'm happy with my choice. Eh, he's got uh, 40 more horsepower. That's fine. Anyway, I guess that's it, hopefully. So, thanks for watching. And remember, if you don't look back when you park it, you bought the wrong car.